<clears throat> Shalom. Welcome to Shmoo's Views. I'm your host, Shmuel bin Shlomi, and I want to welcome you back to the channel. Um, before we get started with uh, the next in our Bible series, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you can know when new videos come up. Also, uh, if you could hit that thumbs up or like button and uh, share this video with your family and friends and uh, across social media platforms. We're going to be looking at part two of our Bible series. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at the, the what and when of the Bible. In the first video for this, uh, the Bible series, we briefly touched on the who of the Bible with a hint of the what, which will be what is covered in this part two of the series. Now, what do I mean by the what of the Bible? Basically, just what is the Bible about in general and specifically? How is the character of this ancient set of texts characterized by the various authors? How did it come into being from its earliest form to what is currently understood as the Jewish Bible in the 21st century CE? How is it composed? What is its structure and canon? And so forth. The why of all these what's will be discussed in a future video for this series. But for now, let's take a look at what the Jewish Bible is made of. Besides coming to an understanding of the nature of the Bible, it is important to know when these various texts, documents, and words were used, and by whom, and to who they were written, in order to keep those words and stories found in the text contextual. Uh, as to maintain their original meaning for its target audience of, of the time it, it was written or spoken. This will help us from lifting the text out of its original intention to make it artificially fit into our current age and, and way of thinking. Fundamentalism is replete with this kind of interpretation and has led to all kinds of suffering in the world. So then, what is the composition of the Jewish Bible? Well, as stated in part one, the Jewish Bible is, uh, is not called the Old Testament. That is a term used by Christians, beginning with the rise of Roman Catholicism in the 4th and 5th century CE. The name of the Jewish Bible is called the Tanakh and actually comes from an acronym derived from the three sections it has been broken into by biblical sages of the past that was already in use sometime between 200 BCE and 2 CE. Taking the first letter of each section, you get T for Torah, N for Navim are the prophets, and K for Ketuvim are the writings, which include such books as Tehillim, Mishlei, Daniel, etc., and so from the T, the K, and the N, I mean the, uh, the T, the N, and the K, we get the word Tanakh. Also of importance is to realize that the Jewish Bible is not just one book, but is composed of 24 separate books, texts, and documents, poems, songs, and prose written at different times over the course of nearly 1,400 years by many different authors, mostly Jewish men, but some were women, and some who were not Jewish at all. While the Tanakh contain, contains history, some factual, some not, it is not a history book per se. It contains some science, but it certainly is not a book dedicated to the scientific imperial method. It is a work of fact, it is a work of fiction, but it is not written to entertain, but to inform, teach, and learn from. We will touch on the why of the Bible in an upcoming video presentation for this series. Now, the authors of these various texts range from a priestly scribal class, such as those uh, that, uh, men like Moshe and Ezra, to judges like Samuel and uh, Deborah or Deborah, royalty like King David, King Solomon, government officials such as Nehemiah and Mordecai, and a bevy of prophets from a wide range of strata among the people of Israel, ranging from priests, the political and economic elite, to simple field workers, farmers, servants, 
shepherds. What all of these had in common was a desire to share their trust in the God of their fathers. They were drawn to a need to call their fellow citizens to repentance from their transgression of the law of Moshe, warning them of the consequences of their continued turning away from the foundational laws of the nation and the blessings upon returning to the ways of the Torah. Concerning when the Jewish Bible was written opens the door to a Pandora's box of academic and theological debate and sometimes outright battles. One thing we do know is that the canon of the Bible was not fully put together until sometime around 100 CE to 400 CE by rabbinic authority. The Christian canon was completed well after that by several hundred years. It is also known that the three sections were known and used by as early as 100 BCE and certainly by 1 CE, based on non-biblical references to the various books and their divisions by rabbis and priests of that period. However, these were not always in agreement as to which books and texts were acceptable for all Jews until that period of between 100 and 400 CE mentioned earlier. With the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in Qumran in 1947 CE by an Arab shepherd boy, the date for many of the books and texts of the Jewish Bible uh, writings can be dated to at least 200 BCE. Until further archaeological findings may prove otherwise, we can safely say at this point in history that until at least to the time before the Babylonian exile between 597 to 586 BCE, most, if not all, of the stories and writings of the Jewish Bible were transmitted orally, with the exception of some of the Psalms and Proverbs and perhaps sections of Devarim or Deuteronomy. During the 70-year exile in Babylon, the Jewish elite scribe and priestly clans began the arduous task of taking those oral stories and traditions from the remnants of the northern Israel kingdom and those of the southern Judah kingdom and weaving them into a tapestry and collection of written texts that would be familiar to modern day readers of the text today. We have a, a later example of this kind of redactor work with the compilation of the oral Torah and tradition into written form around, uh, when around 200 CE, when Judah Hanasi, Judah the Prince, feared that the oral Torah, what we today call the Mishnah, was in danger of being lost as a result of the dispersion of the Jews across the Roman Empire, took on the monumental task of committing the oral Torah to writing. And thankfully for his inspired effort, we have with us to this day the ancient words of our sages of blessed memory, just as we are thankful to those brave and daring scribes and priests in Babylon over 2,500 years ago for preserving our oral stories into written form in what we today know as the Tanakh or the Bible. So then, broken down to its most basic function of the what of the Bible, it can be summed up as follows. The Torah gives the nation and individual the instructions and tools that are expected of it and them for civilized national behavior and identity. The prophets inform the listener and reader of the repercussions that will ensue if those laws are mitzvot commandments and instructions are not heeded or are ignored by the nation or the individual. The writings, besides giving the nation and individual a literal hymn book of, for praise to the creator of all that is, also illustrates in very poetic language the life of blessing and purpose when the nation and individual choose to follow that instruction. So now we know what the Bible is about, basically. In our next video, which will be the last in the series of the Bible, we're going to look at why. Why did the Bible get written down in the first place? Why did all of these oral stories and oral traditions that have come down to us, down through the centuries, at some point got written down? What was, you know, why was the purpose? And we're going to look at that in our next video. Until that time, I'm going to ask you again to get down to business here. Subscribe. 
hit the notification bell, hit the like button, and share this video with uh, those around you, your family, friends, on or across your social media platforms. And uh, I really appreciate all that you do. And I want to encourage you to keep looking at that Bible, keep studying it. There's a lot of truth in there, and you can learn from it, and it will certainly guide your path. So until next time, I'm wishing you shalom.